What's going on everybody? So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over the pros and cons of multifamily real estate investing. As a multifamily investor myself, I own a few apartment buildings. I have direct experience with this, but I've also learned from some of the top multifamily investors out there. So in this 10 minute real estate video, I'm gonna go over the pros, the cons, as well as stories for each example that I give. So you can have just almost like direct experience with what I'm bringing up. And of course, if you have any questions whatsoever, just drop them in the comment section below and let's jump into it. So the first benefit of multifamily investing is that there's gonna be less competition. Most people, when they're looking for investment properties or rental properties, and by most, I mean like 99% of people, they're almost always looking at single family houses, condos, townhouses. If you even bring up multifamily investing, they kind of look at you funny. There's not that many people out there that are actually looking for multifamily deals. Now, that's not to say that there's just no competition out there. Look, everything is competitive, but just generally speaking, you know, if there's 100 people looking for rental properties, probably 95 or 99 of those people are gonna be looking for single family house rental properties, which leaves more opportunity for you as the multifamily investor. The next benefit to multifamily investing is that it can become easier and more passive than other types of real estate investing, like flips, for example. I was listening to a podcast by a very well-known uh, commercial real estate investor who would, started by only doing flips. And he, he ended up like buying, I think it was like a 10 or 15 unit. And it kept paying him every single month as a multifamily property should. And eventually he realized that, hey, he's getting paid every single month by this one property and he's not really doing too much. I mean, he has like a part-time property manager. Whereas these flips, you know, he might be working 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week, you know, on, on different flips. And it takes a ton of work and, and then the money goes away after you sell the property. Whereas the multifamily building, the money keeps coming every single month. So he basically said, you know what, I'm gonna do more of that, more of the multifamily and really scale this thing up. And now I, I don't think he would even consider a flip unless he was like flipping an actual multifamily building. Uh, but once you get to like a 20 unit, a 50 unit, a 100 unit, and you set it up and you make sure that, you know, repairs are done, management set up, the property is stabilized, that's when you can really just start, I don't wanna say sitting back and counting your cash, but it becomes a lot more of a smoother process. The next benefit is the scalability. So a lot of people, when they get into real estate investing, it's because they wanna quit their job. They wanna buy enough rental properties so that the cash flow can basically replace uh, their W-2 income. The cash flow. And while I think that's a great idea, you know, you should strive for financial freedom, you know, passive income. It's gonna take a lot of single family rentals to actually replace your job's income, unless you just have some massive down payments or you're just paying complete cash for all these different properties. A lot of people will say that $300 a month in cash flow is like a great rental property. And that's a pretty good rental property. But do you know how many of those $300 a month rental properties you would need to actually replace your job's income? It's, it's quite a bit. It's going to be much more strategic and probably a lot easier to purchase one really large multifamily building as opposed to like 50 single family houses. If you buy one 50 unit, that's one loan, it's probably one property manager, you know, one roof, one location versus 50 different rental properties where you're driving all over the place, driving yourself crazy, driving your property manager crazy. Uh, it's gonna be a lot easier if everything's under one roof. You don't hear about too many people owning like a thousand single family rentals because it's just, I don't wanna say it's not possible, but it's just extremely difficult to do that. Whereas you do hear about people that own a thousand units and they're not single family rentals. They're you know usually like 100 unit buildings, 50 unit buildings, 75 unit buildings spread out across the country because with a building of that size, you can typically have an in-house property manager, maybe raise some money for it uh, and, and get a loan for it, but you're not gonna need 50 different loans and 50 different property managers and just all types of craziness uh, going on. So there's a much more scalability with multifamily. The next benefit is that you just make more with multifamily. There's some multifamily investors that might only do like one deal a year. However, that deal might be like a $20 million deal with like 200 units. It cash flows, let's say 500,000 a year or whatever the cash flow is. Uh, but it's gonna be significantly more profitable than doing like 20, 30 or 40 little single family houses where maybe you make you know $300 a month or maybe you make 20,000 flipping it or whatever it is. Just about all the wealthiest real estate investors in the, in the US as well as the world do it through, you know, some do it through new construction, but most of them do it through like multifamily acquisitions and development and owning large scale types of projects as opposed to owning just single family houses. There's also typically less risk with multifamily investing if you purchase the property correctly. And let me explain. So if you have a single family rental and the person stops paying their rent, which actually happened to me at my first rental, the person stopped paying their rent, uh, painted the house uh, some weird color, painted the condo some weird color, and I basically had to evict them. And I wasn't getting any cash flow for, you know, I don't know, maybe it was like three or four months. If that happens in a multifamily building, you know, you might have three, four, five, 10, 20, 50, 100 
other people that are still paying their rent every single month. So one person not paying the rent is not the biggest deal in the world. And actually Grant Cardone talks about this. He said the first investment he ever did was, uh, I think it was like a single family house and he didn't have to evict the people, but they moved out after six months. And then he had to find new, new renters and it took a while and he just wasn't making any money during that time period. So after that, he said, look, I'm only doing multifamily from here on out uh, because you know, if someone moves out, it's not that big of a deal. You have other people paying the rent. The last benefit of multifamily investing before we get into the cons is that with multifamily properties, you can control the value a lot more so than with residential properties. Residential properties, you know, you're more looking at the comps and just like the neighborhood and you know, how the landscaping looks and, and you know, what, are, what is the kitchen, what do the bathrooms look like? And you can influence the value, you know, to a certain extent. However, with multifamily investing, it's much more so just based on the income of the property. It's like basically someone's like buying a franchise or buying a couple franchises. I mean, cause you could have two multifamily buildings. If one is sitting on one block and it's completely vacant, and then another one is like just a complete cash cow and all 50 units are filled, but in all other aspects are basically the same building. You know, the one that has the cash flow and maybe lower expenses, you know, that one is going to sell for an extreme premium above like the vacant one that needs to be turned around and everything like that. So you can have a lot more influence over the value and the ultimate sales price. And I mean, if you have a big building, just increasing the, uh, the rent by $10 per month, it's going to have a drastic impact uh, on the value as well as you know you just your monthly cash flow um so just like little numbers like that and that's why again why it's you know the scalability factor when you have a 50 or 100 unit building it's going to be a lot easier to build your wealth and build the value of the property now as far as the cons go uh number one it's going to be more expensive to purchase a multifamily building i mean obviously uh you're going to typically need 25 percent down and that's if the building is all already like running and stabilized um, however, if you're just getting started in multifamily, like, like I was, um, a year or two ago, I purchased a four unit building with an FHA loan. So you can always do that. That's only three and a half percent down. So you can really get your foot in the door with a smaller down payment. However, once you start going to the 10 unit, 20 unit, 50, hundred units, you know, it's going to be obviously more expensive, more of a down payment, but you can also raise money from investors. What's popular with multifamily investing is just is syndicating, doing syndications where you raise money from different investors and maybe each person puts in 25, 50 or hundred thousand. And then together you can purchase some of these larger scale assets. I'd recommend starting smaller and working your way up to that. Um, but some people just, you know, jump into the hundred unit buildings. The next con to multifamily investing is the competition. So I know I said there's less competition. However, the competition that you will have is gonna be savvier. People that are buying four, even a four unit or 10 unit, 20, unit, or especially like a hundred unit buildings, that's gonna be, it's not necessarily gonna be like some Wall Street CEO. Sometimes it might be if it's a 100 unit building, um, but it's going to be a savvier type of purchaser. So again, that's why you really wanna just build up your experience with some of these smaller deals and, and work your way up to, uh, you know, maybe you start with a four unit, then you do a 10 unit, then you do a 40 unit. And then maybe from then on out, maybe you just only do a hundred units, but uh, you know, build up your experience, build your dream team so you can have like every little advantage when you start to go against some of these, you know, sharks uh, in the multifamily world. The next con is location. So because there's just less multifamily apartment buildings, there's not gonna be like a multifamily apartment building on just every block that you can purchase in your own neighborhood. Typically multifamily investors go nationwide. Now you might focus on an area and, and when you're getting started, I'd recommend that you start kind of in your own backyard just to get the kinks out and everything. Uh, but eventually you're gonna probably expand to looking at, you know, Texas, Hawaii, maybe not Hawaii, but you know, Florida, Oklahoma, Maryland, you know, all across the country. And so a lot of times these multifamily investors are managing properties almost like absentee. You know, they probably live a couple of states away and they're still managing the property. Maybe they go down to visit it, you know, once a month, once every couple of months just to make sure everything's running. Uh, but you know, once you get the experience, you can set up systems and property managers and, and, and really get it rocking and rolling. So there you have it. Those are the pros and cons to multifamily investing. And if you have any questions about multifamily investing, just drop them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to personally respond. And then if you have any deals or you want to partner on deals or you want to invest in any of my multifamily deals, uh, just reach out to me on Instagram or you can also reach out to me on my website and I can send you um, an investor sheet and FAQ and you can fill that out and we can just kind of continue the conversation from there. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.